we gave the fantasy baseball season and here's a few pitches i'll combine trade for this week the first guy hunter green of the cincinnati reds so hunter green he was on the list last week and once again he's making it this week hunter green he's got electric stuff obviously the reds believe in him give him a nice contract in the offseason to buy out his arbitration years and so far this season it hasn't been that good of a year 50 innings 0-4 record 69ks a 4.6 80 RA. 1.50 whip and only two quality starts on the season in the last few weeks. 16 and a third, 0 and 2 record, 22 Ks, a 6.61 ERA, and a 1.65 whip. So right now, Hunter Green, he's not going deep into games. He's pretty much been a five or six inning pitcher, but his upside is just great. And I know we don't get a lot of run support with the Cincinnati Reds being one of the worst teams in the National League. So the last few outings here for Green, May 10th versus the Mets, five and a third, got the loss. Six hits, two runs, four walks, four Ks in that one. May 15th at the Rockies, four innings, no decision. Nine hits, six runs, a walk, eight Ks in that one. And May 21st versus the Yankees, I thought he pitched well, but it was a tough luck loser. Seven innings, got the loss. Four hits, four runs, three walks, and 10 Ks. So right now, he don't have a win under his belt. Obviously, the potential's there. And the strikeout rate is still very great this season, 69 in only 50 innings on the year and in the last three ball games he's got 22 strikeouts in the time is hunter green so his next outing is at wrigley field at the chicago cubs tomorrow and i think he finally could get his first win of the season so right now while he hasn't done much besides having a good strikeout rate i think the wins will start coming for him this red team they've actually been competitive over the last few weeks believe it or not and hunter green this week i will buy him next size emmanuel Clays of the Cleveland Guardians a class year last season he was one of the best closers in fantasy baseball but this season I think last year a lot of innings on his arm and he hit a wall on the year 24 innings one in four records 16 saves 16 strikeouts a 3.380 RA and a 1.25 whip in the last few weeks 0-2 record three saves five Ks 9.64 ERA and a 2.14 whip so right now I know he's still got tons of saves at 16 the Guardians the games they do win a close ones but like i said the last few weeks that era is over a nine and on the season he's already blown five saves as class a where last season he pretty much was perfect throughout most of the year 42 or 46 saves so more blown saves than last season ready for class a he's on a mid middle of the pack type of team with the guardians i know the saves are high but obviously he's been struggling the last few weeks here so i'm not a big proponent for closes in fantasy baseball i think it's a crapshoot and you find to find similar players on the waiver wire but this week here well class a hasn't done much the last few outings and has blown saves i think you get him on a cheap deal for one of your bench hitters or one of your last hitters in your starting lineup this week so i would make the deal the next pitcher is taj bradley of the tampa bay race so bradley it looks like he's gonna have a spot in the rotation i know tyler glass knows he's gonna be back now by the weekend it looks like most likely or early next week and Taj Bradley's a good pitching prospect one of the top pitching prospects in all major league baseball and so far in the year 24 and a third three and one record 34 k's 4.44 ERA a 1.15 whip for Taj Bradley in the last couple weeks nine innings he's pitched 0 and one record 11 k's 6 ERA a 1.56 whip so Bradley like I said he's got a lot of upside in my opinion is Bradley he had a good first stint before he went to the minor leagues and struggled. And the problem is the Rays, they're trying to mold some of these pitchers into the way they want them to pitch. Where Brad Lee was a pitcher that was pitching great the first month of the season before he got called down. And they shouldn't have messed with him. But right now he's on the best team in baseball. The run support will be there. These pitches in a pretty decent ballpark. And I think Brad Lee, after the last two outings, where one was mediocre and the other one was poor, could bounce back the last few games for May 18th at the Mets five innings no decision three hits two runs two walks four Ks and May 23rd versus Toronto four innings got the loss in that one nine hits four runs seven Ks I like the strikeouts 17 strikeouts the last three outings here for Bradley he's got good stuff he's got a nice two seam fastball that really runs away from those batters he's Taj Bradley and right now I think it's a little bit of him trying to change it up a little for, some, for this Tampa Bay Ray team. But I think Bradley has a lot of upside. And yes, all these prospects have come up this season. Three tickets, but I would rather have younger guys than the aging veterans on my roster who could 
easy we go on the injury list, especially with the pitch clock and just the way the game's changed. So right now, Taj Ridley, while he hasn't done much in the month of May here since he got called up after April, he was dominating. This is the time to go out there and get him because I think he could pay big dividends and he could finish the season as a nice fourth or fifth starter in your fantasy rotation. The next pitcher, Musgrove of the San Diego Padres. So Musgrove, we know he broke his toe early in the season. And he came out of the gate slow with the injury. And so far, it's definitely showing 24 innings, 1-2 and two record. 25 Ks, a 6.75 ERA, and a 1.58 whip. And over the last couple weeks, 10 and 2 thirds. 0-2 oh record, 11 Ks, a 6.75 ERA, and a 1.78 whip. So Musgrove, not a quality star yet under his belt this season. The only thing he really has going for him right now is he's getting a strikeout per inning. Where last season, he was doing the same thing. So right now, you just got to keep that ball in the ballpark. He's got to get his stamina back, I think, Musgrove. That injury definitely took a toll on him, obviously. Dropping the weight on his foot in the weight room and breaking the toe. Where obviously power does come from your legs, even though it is a toe, but still. And Musgrove, he had eight stuff last season. So this year, May 7th versus the Dodgers. Five innings in that one. Two hits, no runs, three walks, five Ks. May 13th at the Dodgers again, five and two-thirds got the loss. Eight hits, four runs, four walks, five Ks. And then May 20th versus Boston, a little bit better. Five innings, got the loss, though. Six hits, four runs, a walk, six Ks. So right now, Musgrove, I think it's going to take him a little bit more to get his pitching on pitching going here. And he's got a tough matchup, obviously. Tomorrow at the New York Yankees in Yankee Stadium where it's hard to pitch and that ball really gets out over there with the short porch and right and left field pretty small as well, the dimensions. But Musgrove and this Padre team, they just come out of the gate very slow this season, where last season they made it to the NL Championship. So anyway, Joe Musgrove, I think, could turn things around. He's got ace type of stuff. The Padres obviously believe in him, give him a nice extension in the offseason. And right now, while he really hasn't done much for fantasy owners, this is the time to go out there and get him. Because like I said, if you don't have to give up much to get a guy like Musgrove, on your roster and turn things around and it could be a top of the rotation pitcher for you in fantasy that would be a big get in the fifth and final pitcher i look to buy this week is his teammate blake snell with the san diego padres so snell he's known as a second half pitcher over the last few seasons and so far this year he's been one of the biggest busts in my opinion in fantasy baseball 45 innings one in six record 48 k's a 5.40 era 1.56 whip and only three quality starts on the season and the last couple weeks for him 10 innings 0-1 record 9k's a 7.20 era a 1.50 whip and a quality start so blake snell's actually been dropped in a decent amount of fantasy weeks still on than 77 percent but by chance if he's out there on your waiver wire and you got an open spot or play you're not doing much i would obviously go pick up the blake snell but right now to acquire him in a trade you could give up even a closer, I think, possibly in a deal if the Blake Snow owner is just willing to give him away for anything. Wayne six versus the Dodgers, six innings got the loss. A hit, two runs, three walks, six Ks, a quality start. May 12th at the Dodgers, six innings in that one, four hits, two runs, four walks, four Ks, a quality start. And May 19th versus the Red Sox, four innings in that one, five hits, six runs, two walks, five Ks. So he got shelled in the last outing and May 6th and May 12th, decent outings, but obviously a tough Dodger team that you're gonna see. But now his start is here today for Blake Snell. So if you could go out there and get him before this good matchup on paper at the Washington Nationals, this would be the time to do it. But like I said, June or July is where Snell's picked it up over the last few months. And this Padre team, they're too talented of a roster to be slumping right now and not hitting the baseball. Or these guys not pitching like Musgrove and Snell up to potential. So right now, while Snell hasn't really done much this season, and a guy you could easily get on a discount this week, he's a pitcher I will buy. So that's a few pitches I look to buy here in week eight of the fantasy baseball season.